All right, so welcome tonight. My name is Laura Lundquist. I'm a physiotherapist and the owner here at Zoomers Physiotherapy and Health Solutions in Halifax. And I'm thrilled that you've decided to join me tonight for this session to talk about the importance of building strength and balance today in order to safeguard yourself against falls uh, and other health concerns tomorrow. So uh, we'll go through this presentation and you'll have a chance to try a couple of things and, uh, and get a sense of where you stand and maybe give you some food for thought on things that maybe are worth working on to help improve your quality of life and, and being able to enjoy the things that you love today, tomorrow, and next year and beyond. There we go. So just a little bit about me before we get going. I, like I say, I am a registered physiotherapist and I've been treating since 2003. Uh, I do hold the highest credentials that are recognized in Canada in manual therapy, which would be like hands-on physiotherapy and in sport physiotherapy. And that experience and working from 2003 until 2018 really showed me that there was a need out there for older adults to have a place that really supported their health and fitness needs um, as things change over the years. And so that's what prompted me to open Zoomers in 2018. And our focus is to bring high quality health and fitness services to adults that really support healthy, active aging so that we can all get the most out of every day, week, and year. After tonight, I hope that you can take away a better understanding of the normal age-related changes that affect our strength, our balance, and our mobility, and that it can uh, affect our risk of falling. Uh, that you have a little more confidence in knowing how you can actually impact your falls risk uh, and have a, a couple of tools in your tool belt to do that. And then also, I hope that you leave with a little bit of enthusiasm to reevaluate your own plan to make sure you're setting yourself up for success. Ultimately, we each have to be responsible for our physical health. And, uh, and I hope that you can leave this session feeling enthusiastic about your ability to, to change your physical health uh, for the better. So our planned program here, I didn't mention actually when that, uh, that picture was up of me, obviously um, that was my husband and two children that were there. So I have a son and a daughter. Oscar is six and Hazel is four. And, uh, and this is a picture of Oscar uh, climbing up a rock climbing wall. And so I think it's always a good idea to have a plan of where you're going. So that's what this is all about. So our planned program for tonight, thankfully not climbing a rock wall, but I do want us to talk about lifestyle span versus health span, differentiate those two things from each other, talk about what the risk factors for falls are, and then the normal age-related changes that can affect our risk of falling. After that, we'll do a bit of an exercise demonstration, and you'll have a chance to do a little bit of self-assessment as well. And then we'll do a wrap-up. And again, I am happy to have you um, ask any questions at the end. So uh, because I'm doing this session on my own here tonight, I'll get you to keep your questions in the chat bar, and uh, I'll be sure to look through those at the end, and, and we'll chat through them. So this is a good little quote that I think is worth just letting settle a little bit, which is, if you don't take time for your wellness, you will be forced to take time for your illness. We all lead really busy lives, but this quote by Joyce Sonata really forces us to realize that although our lives are busy and there are a lot of things that we could allow to get in the way of doing the important work today that we should be doing in order to safeguard ourselves tomorrow, if we let the busyness of our lives prevent us from doing those important things today, uh, then we won't have a choice about it in the, the weeks and years to come. So, uh, so it is really important to, to make sure that you're making that a priority in order to be able to be busy with all the things that you love down the road. And that brings me to this concept of lifespan versus health span. Life expectancy uh, and lifespan is something that's familiar to most of us. It continues to increase in Canada, which is a good thing. So the average woman in Canada can expect to live to be just under 84 years, and the average man can expect to be just under 80 years. Uh, and those are great lengths of life. And I, like I say, they continue to increase with advances in medicine and science. Um, but there's another concept called the health-adjusted life expectancy. And this health-adjusted life expectancy is something that the World Health Organization has identified. And it is actually defined as the period that somebody is healthy or free of serious disease. And so the trick here is that if you look at these numbers for women, 
the Health Adjusted Life Expectancy, or HAIL, would be uh, just 70 and a half, just under 71 years, and for men, about 69 years. And so those numbers matter because there's a fairly large discrepancy there between lifespan and health span. And often when we think about living uh, longer, we think about living longer in a healthy way, not living longer with a serious disease or disability. And so, of course, there are some things that aren't preventable, but there are lots of things that are preventable or modifiable. And so being conscious of this concept of not just trying to live longer, but to try to live healthier and a higher quality of life really does um, impact our ability to, again, enjoy, enjoy every day, enjoy our family, enjoy our friends. So we need to know how to influence that health span, right? So some of these things are not rocket science. They're things that we all have heard of at some point or another. Uh, so a healthy and a balanced diet, obviously that has an important role. What we put into the tank definitely uh, has an impact on what the tank can give back out. Uh, avoiding smoking and excessive alcohol consumption, also uh, commonly understood to be things that can increase our health span, right? More healthy years. Um, but then there are some other things. So maintaining intellectual stimulation. So this is making sure that you're keeping your brain going. So doing the morning puzzles, those sorts of things are really healthy for improving or maintaining the ability of your brain for it to do its work. And that has a positive consequence on your potential health span. An interesting one is maintaining social connectivity. So Susan Pinker is actually a Canadian psychologist who has this fabulous TED Talk uh, that you can just Google Susan Pinker 2017 TED Talk and you'll find it. Uh, I won't go into great detail here, but she really talks about the how the research shows how important social connection is to our health span. And so it's how how important it is to have a small group of friends that you can really lean on, rely on. You know, she would say the people that you can call for a loan. Uh, and, and there's that important group of people in your life. But there's also some evidence that shows it's really important to have just regular connection with a large group of people, even if it's just the person that you get your coffee from, the person that you buy your groceries from, just all of those little pieces of social connection and how important they are to helping us maintain our health span. And I think a lot of us would agree over the last uh, little while with the COVID restrictions and the limitation in our movements and the reduction in our social connections, uh, a lot of us have really felt how that, that has had a negative influence on, on how we feel. And that can, uh, that can affect our health span for sure. So I won't go any further on there, but do have a look at that TED Talk if it interests you because it is really interesting. Uh, maintaining a moderate um, amount of exercise, a routine of moderate exercise, that one again, probably not a surprise to everybody, although may not be something that you're regularly doing, but most of us recognize that it does have some importance on uh, our longevity and again, how healthy we are. And then the last one would be reducing the risk of injury. And that's where we're going to talk a little bit now about falls. And the reason that reducing the risk of falls in particular is so important, particularly as we talk about in the sort of older adult demographic. So if we look at adults who are over age 65, we will expect that one in three people over the age of 65 will fall this year, which is a pretty big number. And half of those people will sustain injuries that threaten their mobility and their independence. And some of those injuries can be things like hip fractures, traumatic brain injuries. Sometimes it can be something relatively innocent like a wrist fracture, uh, but they can also be much more sinister in terms of the impact that they potentially have on our quality of life, sometimes even contributing to an increased risk of mortality, particularly when we talk about hip fractures. So falls should be something that we are actively trying to prevent and we need to try to prevent them before they happen <laughs> so it's important in order to prevent them it's important to understand what might lead us to a fall so what are the risk factors for falling we generally divide these risk factors into two different areas. So one would be non-modifiable risk factors, which would be things you can't change, and then modifiable risk factors, which are things we can change. So the non-modifiable risk factors would be things like how old we are. So certainly as we get older, uh, we have a higher risk of falling. We can't change our age, so we're stuck with that one. Uh, a history of falls. So if you've already had a fall, you are far more likely to fall again. And so that's why preventing falls before we have had a fall in the first place is a really uh, great strategy in terms of maintaining that health span. 
And then, of course, there can be chronic conditions that affect sensation, that affect strength, that affect mobility, and those things can leave us more likely to have a fall. But again, they are not modifiable in and of themselves. The modifiable or changeable risk factors could be things like medications. So there are some medications that we need to be conscious of in terms of perhaps their impact on us feeling dizzy. There, uh, improper use of gait aids. So this is an interesting one. Things like crutches and canes and walkers and walking poles are all fantastic mobility aids or gait aids that we can use to reduce our risk of falls. But if they're not set up properly or we're not using them properly, they themselves can then actually become a risk factor. They can cause us to have a fall or to have more risk of falling. So we have to make sure we're using those properly. It's important to keep an eye on our vision, <laughs> literally. <laughs> Uh, so making sure that you're get, having your eyes regularly checked because making sure that you're using appropriate uh, eyewear if necessary in order to manage your any vision changes is really important. And then here are the big ones we're going to spend our time talking about, strength, balance, and fear of falling. So if we have a reduced level of strength, we have a higher risk of falls. If we have reduced balance, we have a higher risk of falls. If we have a fear of falling, we also have a higher risk of falls. And so it's important to feel confident and strong in our movements and confident in our body in order to reduce that risk of, fe uh, sorry, that fear of falling in order to reduce any risk imposed by that. So this is Hazel with Santa. It was bad news that day. The bad news is normal age-related changes include decreased cardiovascular endurance, which is decreased capacity of the heart and lungs, decreased flexibility in our joints and in our muscles, decreased strength in our muscles, and decreased balance, which can happen for a variety of reasons. And so, whoop, oh, I sped ahead. There we go. Uh, and so remember, the non, or the modifiable risk factors that I mentioned included strength reduction, balance reduction. It didn't include decreased flexibility on that list, but certainly that can be a factor as well. And so, obviously, for all of us, as the years go by, we are normally going to have these changes. And so, they are things that, uh, that put us at more risk for falling. But the good news, this is Hazel on a happier day, uh, is that they are all modifiable and changeable. So we have power over our cardiovascular endurance, our level of flexibility, our level of strength, and our level of balance. Of course, in certain conditions, uh, you know, you may not be able to influence that as strongly or as powerfully as you might if without other underlying health conditions. But as a general rule, all of these systems can be improved uh, at any point in our life. So it is never too late to start working on cardiovascular health, flexibility, strength, and balance. This is Oscar doing his overhead press uh, at a younger time in his life. He's very excited about exercise, which is great. I will have to critique him on his technique someday, but I'll let him get away with it. I think age, this is age four and a half, so I, I let him get away with that technique for that day. So now the question is, how do you measure up? And so what I'm going to have you do is, this is the active portion of the day, so stand up if you feel comfortable to do so. And I'm going to have you stand up and be, uh, we're going to go with the chair right away. So grab your chair, and I'm actually going to stop sharing my screen so that you can see me clearly here. There we go. All right, so you're going to see me here, and you're going to sit in your chair with a little bit of space around you. And I'm just grabbing my stopwatch. So what you're going to do is sit in your chair with your feet and knees hip width apart, sitting towards the front or middle of your chair. Make sure that your chair is pushed up against something so it's not going to slide or tip, right? Remember my story about my son falling off his chair and giving himself a black eye this week? No black eyes during this session. So do make sure that you're set up for safety. But then what we're going to do is simply do a stand up and a sit down, just like this. And you're going to do as many of them as you can in 30 seconds. Now remember, this is a evening presentation to assess your health. Lots of times we would do these assessments with our clients. So I don't know any of you or most of you individually 
make sure that you listen to your body. Don't do something here that is painful, but if you feel comfortable to try it, give it a try. If you don't feel comfortable to try it, then just sit back, take 30 seconds off, and, uh, and then you can join in when we do our next one, okay? So get yourself ready. Maybe do one practice run or one practice stand up, okay? Get yourself ready. Don't use your hands if you can help it, but use them if you need to, all right? Our timer is going to start now. Remember to count your repetitions. You need to know how many that you did in 30 seconds. Ready, set, go. You have to come all the way up and all the way down. You got it. Excellent. Keep it going. I love seeing all the up and down out there. Looks good. Make sure you're using your thigh muscles and your bum muscles. That should be what's powering you up and down. Listen to your body. Stop if you need to. Don't forget to breathe. Five seconds to go. Perfect. There's 30 seconds. Whew. Good. All right. Now, give yourself a moment. And I want you to, um, if you've got a piece of paper there, just jot down how many you did. Okay? Next one for how you measure up is a, a single leg stand. Now again, if you have a knee that's got osteoarthritis and doesn't really like um, a lot of sustained pressure, then just sit this one out for now, okay? But if your knees are okay, doesn't bother you to stand on one leg, I want you to stand up and I'm gonna set a timer and I want you to see if you can get to 20 seconds standing on one leg with your hands on your hips and your free leg just lifted like this but not touching your other leg. Okay, so body is nice and tall. So you just look like that, free leg up, hands on hips, okay? And for our purposes tonight, we're just gonna try one leg. So choose the leg that you think is your best, okay? On your mark, get set, balance, go for it. So hold as long as you can. You could count a little in your mind if you want, that's seven seconds. Keep going. That's 12. Very good. All right, and there's 20. Excellent. Very good. All right. So have a seat back down. Now, with any luck at all, this will be a seamless process. We'll see. Doop. All right, there we go. Okay, so how do you measure up? So here are the normal values. And remember, nor I, I sort of hate the word normal because it doesn't take into consideration anything about your health status or history, but it does just give you a sense of generally where people are in terms of strength and balance for your age and sex. So if you have a look at the sit to stand norms, find your age bracket there and then either the women or the men, and then see where your number of sit to stands fell in terms of the average, okay? And then same thing for the single leg balance norms. So we did eyes open. Eyes closed is always fun, but I prefer to do that with people in person because it's a real challenge. Uh, but again, you can find your age bracket there, male or female. I stopped you at 20 seconds. And you can see that if you're between the ages of 60 and 69, we would expect you to be able to get past 20 seconds. If you're between the ages of 70 and 79, we would expect men to be able to get pretty close to 20 and women to be around the 11 second mark. So again, this isn't meant to say that, um, to give you a grade per se, but just to give you a sense of on average where you fit in with your peers. So when you have that kind of information and you have a sense of where you, where you stand from a strength and a balance perspective, and those are two just very simple tests. Lots of times in the clinic here, we'll run people through a number of tests like that to just get a sense of overall strength, overall balance. And then that helps guide us in terms of what kind of work each person should be doing individually. The Canadian Physical Activity Guidelines tell us that we should be doing two and a half hours or 150 minutes of moderate to vigorous uh, level of aerobic activity every week. So that would be like walking, cycling, swimming, those kinds of activities in 10 minute bouts or longer. Okay, and so this is this falls also the same for adults 18 to 64, and then it's the same level of uh, recommendation for adults 65 and older. Uh, the strength building is the thing that often gets missed or hasn't been as widely 
publicized and adopted, I would say, by the public. And that is, it's recommended that everybody be doing strengthening exercises that strengthens our muscles and our bones at least two days a week. So two to three times a week is usually what we're looking for there. And then those who have mobility issues, or have some balance disturbance, should be regularly doing balance exercises uh, to prevent falls. And I would argue that just about all of us should be doing a little bit of balance work to try to prevent some of those normal age-related changes that I was mentioning. Uh, and then, you know, the last point here just says more physical activity provides greater health benefits. And that, again, really is this health span piece. And if we have uh, a fall that then causes us to not be able to engage in regular activity like this, then that causes us to likely have a shorter health span and have more years lived with disability or dysfunction and discomfort. So it seems like a good idea then to do some exercise. I hope you agree. Uh, so now we're gonna, I'm going to give you a chance to try a few of these um, with me. So the first one you see here, anybody who's done a class with me, an exercise class with me, knows that the sit-to-stand uh, or the squat is my favorite exercise by far. Um, and then next uh, up, I also really like heel raises. The heel raises strengthen our calf muscles, which are really good for giving us propulsion forward when we're walking. And the sit-to-stand exercises strength our, strengthen our thigh muscles and our buttock muscles, which are so important for general mobility and independence, going up and down stairs, walking, all of those kinds of activities. I'm going to show you what these exercises are. I'm just going to go through three slides here, and then I'm going to cut back to the larger screen, and we can practice them together a little bit. So the sit-to-stand and the heel raises are two great strength exercises that we're going to try tonight. Then we've got the balance exercises, so the tandem stance, which is that heel-to-toe, as though you're standing on a balance beam, and a single leg balance, which is not, you may have noticed the sit to stand is also the test. And uh, so the single leg balance is also the test. We just practice those things that we know are valuable to be good at. So, uh, so that's another great exercise and we'll practice those again in a moment. And then two great stretches that I find really helpful for people are the hip flexor stretch, which is the first one you see there for the muscle at the front of the hip and the calf stretch for the lower leg. So let's take a moment now, give yourself a little space there if you've got it. And uh, if you'd like to participate, and again, if you prefer to just stay seated, that's fine too. But I'm going to come back now, and we're going to go through that sit to stand. I gave you a brief little tutorial at first, but now I want you to see if you were sitting just like this, I want you to measure with two fists. Look down first, make sure your toes are pointed forward. Then I want you to take two of your own fists, put them side by side between your knees, and that will have you placed at about hip width apart. And that's where you want to have your legs stay as you do the sit to stand exercise. Ideally not using your hands, but if you need to push a little bit, that's okay. You can always give yourself a little boost there if you need it. But if you can go without, then I prefer you to go without. And then you want to just think of, so just try a couple of those. And you want to just think of controlling that up and down as you go. Making sure that as you come up and down, the knees aren't getting, no kissing knees, they're not getting closer to each other and that you're controlling the sit down and there's no plop at the bottom. If you get a vibration at the bottom, we need to work on control or raise the seat up a little bit so that it's not as low and it's a little easier to control. So that's exercise one. That's a really great one for building leg strength. The next one that's really good for building lower leg strength is the calf raise. So in this one, if you wanna join me, stand behind your chair now and you're gonna stand nice and upright thinking about always keeping your belly muscles just gently engaged. And then you're gonna go up on the toes, just as high as feels comfortable. If you've got bunions or anything that make your toes uncomfortable, just don't go quite as high or leave this exercise out. But as you go up, you wanna feel like the work happens in the calf here and back down. And so these ones you hold for about three seconds at a time. And it's a nice way to just round out the strengthening for the leg. The sit to stand exercise does the thigh muscle and the bum muscle. And then the calf raise does the calf muscle. So those are two great strengthening exercises. The next one that we talked about were the balance exercises. So the single leg stand we did in the test. I don't think we need to practice that one necessarily here. Although one little tip with that one is that oftentimes I always encourage people to be close to something to touch for stability if they need it. However, I would rather that you make your balance corrections with your free leg than with your hand. 
because when you're out walking, if you have a stumble, it's less likely that you have something to grab with your hand, more likely that you need your free leg that's not on the ground to react appropriately and help you catch yourself. So I always want people to be doing this exercise in an environment that's safe where they could use their hand to steady themselves if they needed to, but it's best to encourage your body to, if I'm here like this and I'm losing my balance, I would rather teach my body to put my foot down and then come back up rather than needing to reach for the chair, right? But I would always have the chair there for safety. The second exercise was that tandem walk. This one is always, it sometimes catches people by surprise how tough it is. So you can see me here, I'm a side on to you, and I'm gonna put one foot heel in front of the toe and then put the next foot heel in front of the toe. And you can do that walking or you can do it just in a standing position, trying to hold that static position Ideally, again, hands on hips, but you can be close to something if you need to for stability. If you find that having your heel directly in front of your toe is too unsteady, you can also do this exercise offset a little bit so that it's like you're on a wider plank as opposed to a narrow beam. All right? So those are two great balance exercises. So the single leg stand and the tandem stance walk or tandem stance position. The last two things I want to show you tonight are the hip flexor stretch for flexibility and the calf stretch for flexibility. So for these two, the hip flexor, you're going to come behind your chair uh, or you could do it against a wall, but I usually find a chair works best. You're going to take a large step back with your right leg, keeping your shoulders and hips lined up over one another. And then in this position, you're just going to let your body come forward a little bit to feel it stretch at the front of the right hip. Shouldn't be uncomfortable here. Should just feel like a nice stretch. I call this the anti-COVID stretch because it's a muscle that gets very tight with sitting. So this is the position we want to be in. Often in this stretch, I see people leaning back with their back. And although that will increase the stretch through this muscle, it usually creates discomfort in the low back. So I encourage people to stand upright, but to not lean backward. Let's try the other leg. So bring the right leg forward, take the left leg back. Lift that heel, body nice and tall. And just gently pushing forward to feel that stretch at the front of the hip. Excellent. All right, now let's try the calf stretch. So very similar position here. We're going to stay behind the chair, take the right leg back, but this time keep your heel down and the back leg straight, body nice and tall. And in this position, you should right away feel stretch below the knee on the back of the lower leg. And then we're going to switch up and try for the other side. So these stretches you would want to hold for 20 to 30 seconds probably and do two or three of them at a time. And they're really great exercises. Stretching is great to do every day. So they're great ones to just incorporate in after your walk, after even if you've done a little bit of light housekeeping or something. If you've been moving around a little bit, these are great stretches to loosen up those muscles. So those are the six exercises that I wanted to go through with you tonight. You can have a seat now. Grab a drink if you've got a drink there. You may or may not have realized that you were here for some work tonight, but thanks for joining me. <laughs> Always better when we can do that stuff together. All right, so the takeaways that I hope you get from tonight is that it's important to understand the factors that affect your future risk of falling and recognizing that you actually have the power to reduce that risk by implementing some simple strategies and exercises now in order to safeguard yourself down the road. And I often talk about making deposits in your bank account of health or strength while you're feeling well so that on a rainy day, you can take the dividends out of that bank account, right? So you want to build your strength and balance up so high that if you're down and out a little bit, you've maybe been sick for a week or two and you just haven't been as active and your energy level is low, you've got lots of strength and balance in that bank account to rely on so that you don't drop below the threshold where you start having more more risk of a fall or being more uncomfortable for whatever sort of orthopedic reason. Uh, in particular, osteoarthritis can be a real, a real troublemaker for that sort of scenario. So having better balance and strength um, and building that up can go a long way to helping you down the road increase that life or health span as we increase our lifespan, the two of them together. Uh, and so if you're inspired by what you've learned here tonight and you're wondering how we might be able to help you, we have a couple of different programs here that some of you are familiar with and some of you may not be uh, that 
it really can help you along your way. So one of the biggest things is understanding what you actually need. And that's what our Fit for Life physio assessments here are about. So they're not about um, assessing an injury per se. It's about talking about what activity you're doing, what kind of goals you have in terms of things that you want to be doing and activities you want to be doing. And then we'll do a physical assessment to make sure that you're setting yourself up for success and give you some pointers and guidelines in terms of what you could be adding into your routine in order to promote better health span. Uh, and then we have our Club Z Fitness Program, which is our in-clinic when we can and virtual fitness program that's led by physiotherapists. We have 12 classes every week that are at three different levels of activity or three different levels of difficulty. So there truly is everything is something for everyone there. Uh, and it really is built to help you build strength, balance and mobility. Lastly, I would ask you to stay connected with us. I hope you enjoyed the session here tonight. And you can always find us online at zoomershealth.ca. We're also quite active on Facebook at Zoomers Health. And our YouTube channel, if you haven't been there, you should check it out. We offer lots of different little tidbits of advice. There will be presentations that are available there shortly. And, uh, and lots of little bits and pieces of how to execute specific exercises, how to be a bit more comfortable getting up and down off the floor, all kinds of uh, little physio tricks that we like to share uh, and then watch for special events so we've decided in this lockdown to offer some other um, presentations so we have a couple of upcoming presentations one on core strengthening next Thursday night with our physio here Maggie Sullivan and uh, another one on low back pain and uh, uh, we're calling it low back rescue so everything to rescue your low back uh, the following Thursday with our physiotherapist here Shania Caravan so you can register for those just like you did for this they're all up on the website there now and uh, you can just go through the normal booking portal to find them. <laughs> I always say, I, I don't know if it's uh, right or wrong to quote yourself, but this is something that I, I do say often and, uh, and I really do believe it, which is the easiest way to manage an injury is not to have one at all. And, uh, and that's what we're all about here. And I hope you're inspired to take the actions that you can today to try to prevent those injuries from happening so that you can continue to enjoy all the things that you love. Thank you so much for your time tonight. And I will uh, just come out of this share here and then I'll be happy to entertain any questions that you have.